Hello and welcome to Tektronix. Today we're going to teach you how to do SATA RSG compliance testing on your device under test with a DPO 70,000 series oscilloscope and an AWG. First you have your real-time oscilloscope connected to your signal source using a GPIB cable. There's two set of matched cables going from the appropriate channels with 60B attenuators from the signal source. These connect to your fixture with your DUT on the other end. This next part is going to be setting up the ATX power supply, the scope, and the generator. Now the ATX power supply is what powers our device. This ATX power supply also has a 24 pin header, which when you connect the green and the black cable on the end of that, it shorts it and turn, allows the ATX power supply to be powered. Now I'm going to have the AWG doing this from the DC output. So I connect two of those pins to the bottom right of my AWG where the DCA output is. And this allows Tech Express to be able to, to cycle power on my device during the testing procedure. Now my cables, I've got my 60B attenuators connected to a matched pair of cables that are going to my fixture. And this will be connected to my DUT at a later time. But it's important to know that the AWG is always going to be connected to the receiver side of whatever kind of device or host I have and then this other match cable is going to be going to the transmitter side. So this will be switched, like I said, on a host. Now I'm going to connect this to my DUT. As it's connected, there's a simple test to be able to see if everything's hooked up correct. We're going to do an OOB test. So to do that, first from a default setup, I'm going to switch it over to channel 2. I'm going to turn on my DC output so that my ATX power supply powers up. And then I'm going to switch my channels now. So I'm going to turn off channel 1 and turn on channel 2 and 4. And if I scale out, I should be able to see my OOB pattern being presented here. This next part is going to be setting up Tech Express for SATA RSG testing. So once in Tech Express, I'm going to go up to Tools and I'm going to look at my instruments that I have connected. Now I know I have them connected through GPIB, so I'm going to click on GPIB and click Refresh. I should see my AWG and Scope show up. Next, I'm going to select my tests. So I'm going to do SATA testing, I have a device connected, and I'm going to do RSG testing. Now all the tests are normally selected, so I'm going to deselect these. I'm only going to do one today. Now in this test description box, you'll see exactly what's going to go on. I'm going to also click on Configure now, and this allows me to see my AWG and my scope connected now. Now my channels on the front of my oscilloscope should be connected to channel 2 and 4. If they aren't, make sure they are selected correspondingly here to my device under test. Once that's selected and saved, I can always check my MOI or my schematic if anything is in question. Also, for my device name, I can name it for later use. I'm going to click Run on my test, and my test is going to automatically start correcting and corresponding with all the devices, and it's going to configure everything. You'll see this in the display window below, logging everything that's going on. Now at some point down the road, it's going to, on the scope, look like it's doing it's starting to pull up the air detector. It'll look like this. Now when the air detector actually happens and starts, first you'll see your signal get into loopback mode. This is very important. Your signal must get into loopback mode. Next, it's going to start counting the amount of frames. Now if you see any f air frames at, in, under character errors or disparity errors, you know that there's something wrong. What you should be seeing is that you have frame error zero and you should see in a number and that number will be always increasing. Once the test completes, you'll be brought back to the Tech Express window where you'll be able to view your scorecard and your jitter and amplitude measurements. There's also a tab at the bottom that allows you to see all the pre-configured settings, as well as 
firmware versions, scope used, serial numbers, and such. From the main one, you can go up to the file and you can select Save. This allows you to save this as a MHT. Now this file could be opened up in Internet Explorer for later use. This is SATA testing, and if you have any other questions, please contact us at www.tektronics.com forward slash support.